Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Parametric Planet and the BOM series of Parametric Planet. As I promised in my last video, uh, today I will show you how we can create ETABS model using BOM components. So for this video, I have uh, created a simple example of a portal frame. Uh, in this one, we will be changing the width of the portal frame the eve height of the portal frame and the ridge height of the portal frame. As you can see that uh, we are using the variable sections, uh, which are also known as taper profiles. So we will uh, create this profile in using the bomb components. So at the bottom of this column, we will be using 250, which is the depth of the web. 150 is the width of the flange and six millimeter is the thickness of both web and the flange. And similarly, at the eave height, uh, we will be using 500 millimeter depth of the web and 156, the same uh, thickness and the width of the flange. And then we will reduce to 250 at the ridge height so that we can have this variable or the tapered profile as you can see that here in the sketch, it's not equal. It's 250, 250 is just uh, to give you an overview or an idea about this uh, table profiles. So uh, we will be following the uh, this workflow. First, uh, we will create uh, this portal frame using the native component of Grasshopper using the lines and the points. And then we will convert uh, these lines into BOM objects. And in a BOM workflow, basically first we will create an adopter, then we will create the BOM objects, and then we will create the push uh, component just to send our model to the ETABs. So without wasting any time, let's just uh, dive into the Grasshopper model. As you can see that I have already created this model. I just wanted to save time. So nevertheless, I will explain you uh, how I have created this model. It's not that difficult. I have just used the points and the lines uh, components. So first I have created this uh, number sliders, which are our controlling points or the clear span or the width, if height and the ridge height. If I change this one, you can see it also changes in my Rhino viewport. So first I created this point and then I created another point which moved along the x-axis, which can, uh, which move uh, as per the value of the clear width. Then I have moved, uh, I have used this move component to move those uh, two points along the z-axis. And then I created another point which takes the input from the, the half of the span width plus the eave height and the ridge height. So in the eave height, I have added this height to get the Z ordinate of this point. And then I just uh, connected this one with the Z coordinate and this half of the width span I connected with the X coordinate and then I have created this point. And after that, I have just created these lines which requires starting point and the end point. And I, as I have already created this point, so I just connected these points and I have created these four lines. So now we will be moving on to BOM component, how we can use BOM to convert this line into the BOM objects, and then we will see how it works with the ETABs. First step of BOM workflow is to create an adopter, ETABs adopter. To do so, uh, we will be choosing this create adopter option in adopter step, and then insert this one in the canvas. Right now it's an empty object, uh, now, uh, when you click on this one, right click and select an items, then you will have the multiple options. So we will uh, choose this ETABS 2017 and then it will create an adopter. 
So right now you have three input options, the file path, ETF settings, and the active one. The file path, as I already explained in my previous video, uh, if you have uh, created a template of ETEBS uh, file, and if you want to use that one for your model, so you can save that one in specific folder, and then you can give path of that folder here. You can just create a um, panel here, give that path and just connect it here. So it will automatically open that file. In the ETEP setting, so if you do not know what that means, so the best way is if you just uh, drag this wire out and you release it, then BOM will give you the available options for this input. So now if we go in BOM adopters ETEPs, ETEP settings as it's the ETEP setting, so it will give us further two options either the replace load on the database settings. So if you further drag and drop, so there is no option. So it might be you have to replace some loads or you have to write some panel inputs. If you go to the database, then it will again give you an option of database setting. So in the database setting, basically it provides you the section database. And if you further, do the same option, then it will give you BOM adopters ETIPS section database. So it means this um, option controls the section database, which sections you want to choose uh, for your model, which database. So there are so many options here. So for this one, for this specific example, I will choose none. And regarding the active, you need this Boolean toggle, this will initiate or execute your uh, ETEPS file. Right now it's false, so it will not perform any action. As soon as you turn this one into true, then it will execute your ETEPS file. Right now it's running in the background and it will take some time. Uh, so you have to be very patient. So as you can see, it's almost opened. Let me show you. So here is my ETEPS file. So that's how you can create your ETEPS adopter. And you can change the elevation here and this one. So this is the first step uh, to create your ETEPS adopter. So I will just combine this one in a group. In the second step, we will create the BOM objects using uh, the object modeling tool. Let's create our first uh, object. Uh, I will choose create object from object modeling tab. Right now, this one is empty. If uh, we right click on this one, select an item, then we have a multiple options. Uh, I will go for structure because that's the most suitable. And then in the elements, then we have parts. So now we have further three options. Either uh, we create our bar element of uh, using start node or end node or uh, from directly from the line. So in the line, we have two options. The only difference is uh, the, this vector normal option. So I will go for this options. So in this one, uh, we need line orientation angle. I will keep it zero. I don't want to rotate my section. And the releases, I will go for the default ones. And FVA type, if you just drag and release, then you have an option to choose. Uh, you can choose either flexural, axial, compression only, or the tension only. So in our case, it's flexural member. So I will stick to this flexural option. And then we can also assign a name. So I will just write uh, left column. Ah. Sorry, we need to choose panel. So 
So uh, I will just connect this wire here. So this is our first uh, bomb object. Uh, you can see the, the color has been changed. So uh, now we have to create um, the section property. As I showed you in the slides, uh, we will be creating this variable sections, which is also known as tapered sections. So for that, uh, we will again choose this option, create an object, select an item. So uh, here, if uh, you go to the structure and then the section properties, and then as we are using the steel section, steel section, and then you have here the option to um, fabricated profile. So this one is also fabricated, but if we choose this option, steel, uh, fabricated steel section. So this will allow you to create a new section, which is not available in the uh, AISC library or some other libraries, which are not uh, uh, pre-selected or predefined sections. So with this one, you can create that one. But if you choose this option, you won't be able to create your variable profile. So to create a variable profile, I mean, you have a different section at the base and you have a different section at the eve. So you have to choose this option special and then you have to go to shape profiles. And then in here you have option fabricated I sections profile. So this will allow you uh, to create your I section using the height, top flange width. All the options are the same, but it just, uh, it will allow you to create the variable profile at the start and at the end. So I will just copy this more because I have to create two profiles. So our bottom web is 0.25. So this one takes meters as an input. So this is 0.25 and you can also use the sliders. 0.15, the top flange width, the bottom flange width. And the thickness is six millimeter. And the weld size also six millimeter. At the top, our section is 500. I will choose 0 0.5. And the rest, uh, these options are the same. So now we have two profiles. If you check here, you can see these two profiles with the variable sections. This one is 250 and this one is uh, 500. So uh, I would like to introduce you to this uh, option of uh, explode. So now we have defined this section. So if you want to know the, the, the properties of this section, if you just uh, connect this wire with the explode, so it will give you all the available properties assigned to this section what kind of shape it is, high, top flange width, bottom flange width. And if you just choose this uh, panel, then if you connect, you will uh, see the assigned properties. It's 0.25, top flange width, it's 0.15, bottom flange width is also 0.15, web thickness, top flange thickness, bottom flange thickness, and the world size. So this explode option you can use on any bomb object or um, grasshopper object to get the assigned properties to that object. So uh, now we have uh, created two sections. Now we have to create a variable sections means it should, uh, we have to create an object which allow us uh, to interpolate between these two sections so that we can create this continuous variable sections. So again, if you 
go and create an object and then select an item. And again, if you go to special shape properties, now here you have this option of taper profile and it needs start profile and the end profile and interpolation order. Just connect to this one and to this one. And now if you connect this to section properties, it will give us an error that it's not a I section property. It's just a taper profile. So now we have to convert this one into section property. To do so, again, we have to go to create object, select an item, and now we will go to the structure, section properties, steel sections, and now we have to choose this uh, uh, steel section from profile. This option, it will convert this object into steel section. So let's connect this one here. Now we also need a material name. So if you just drag and drop, then it will give you an uh, option to create your own material. But in that case, I would suggest you to choose this option of create data. In, in this one, they have already uh, assigned the, the material and the section profiles according to standards. So I will go to material USA, then I will choose steel section. And in this one, I will choose create 50. And now we have assigned our uh, material. And we can also assign the name to this profile, this section. So it start from 250, goes to 500. Then we have flange width 150. And then we have a flange thickness 6 millimeter. So this is the name of our steel section profile. And now if we connect this one here, it will not give us any error. So the properties of this object, it will give you, so now it's a section profile. So now it will give you the name and all the other properties. So this is the name. If you check the material profile, just connect. Now we have to create this uh, option of push. This will allow us to send this uh, object to ETABS. So I will connect first. I need an adopter connection. So this is our adopter. Second thing, I need an object. So right now I have just created one object. So I will just use this uh, merge command. Uh, later on, we will create other objects and we will just connect to this merge and we can send it to ETAS. But for now, I will just show you this section, how we can send it to ETABS. So we connect this one, then we don't need to assign any tag, push type, default works perfectly. Otherwise, if you want to check what other options we have, if you select this one, you have full push, create only, create not existence, update only, delete, adopt default. So I will just do this create option. And then for the activity, again, need a Boolean toggle. Uh, this one. And now let's just uh, send this one to ETAPS. It's true. So now we will check in our ETAPS model. So you can see we have this column here. And if I choose this extrude option, now you can see we have this column and it's tapered column here. Now, if I want to change the, the height of our column, so I will just 
reduce the eve height and now i will send this one again and you see now it's the height has been reduced so it's totally parametric so now we will create the rest of the section profiles uh, so now I have just uh, copied this uh, component to create other objects. So this one is the left rafter. Uh, this one is the right rafter. And this one is the right column. And similarly, I have assigned the same sections uh, to these because this one started from 250 to 500. And then I have created another section, which uh, goes from basically 500 to 250. And this is the one. And then I have created the other one, which goes from 250 to 500, and then 500 to 250, as you can see there, 500 to 250. So now I will connect this uh, bar elements with this component so that uh, we can send or push these bars together to ETEP's model. So I will just connect this one to, to this component and just turn this one to true and let's see the magic. Uh, so it has been successfully done. And if we go and check, so now we have our portal frame as we expected, but we have one problem here. Now this section is from 250 to 500. It's basically uh, when I connected this point, so I connected this one to this one. So this is my start point and this is my end point. So that's why this one is 250 and this one is 500. So now we have two options, either uh, we can change the starting point and the end point of this one, or we can just flip this uh, bar. So this one is easy, you can do that, but I would like to introduce you to another uh, component here. So if you come, and check this option of modify bomb object. So this will allow me to, to flip this bar. So I will go and modify this one. And if you see this one is uh, empty, so it's the same procedure, select an item. And if I go to structure, and then I have this option of flip. So now we are dealing with the bar. So I will just choose flip bar. Let's make it to false. Uh, this bar, I will connect this one here. And then I will connect this bar to this merge component. And now we will again send our models to ETABS. See, now the bar has been flipped and now our uh, sections are according to our expectations. So that's how you can create your model. And if you just click here, you can see the section property, the section name, which we have assigned 250 to 500, 500 to 250 and this one, 250 to 500, and 500 to 250. Uh, so now uh, we can also uh, perform some analysis for now just to, I would like to show you this execute option. So this one option, this option also need uh, the adopter and the command which we want to perform and then action configuration and this again this boolean toggle so i will just delete this one and i would like to 
perform analysis in the oh, background. Sorry, I have connected the wrong input, so I need this uh, adapter component. By the way, you can also choose this option here, uh, form adopter, and you can just connect this one here, and then you can just copy paste, and then just move this one here. I the wire and here yeah, now. So uh, now I will uh, use this button. Me, this wants to false. And if you drag and drop, you have multiple command options for analysis, analysis load case clear low results and save. You have a bunch of commands you can choose. So I would uh, like to show you this analyze. So this one, let's just uh, make it to true. And as soon as I send my uh, model, it will analyze this one. Uh, so I have to save my model before doing this one. Uh, just delete this one. I would like to say yes. So I just save my model. Uh, now I will this one. I will send my model. Choose this option again. If I check the bending moment. Let me remove this extrude option so you can see this bending moment diagram here. So that's how uh, you can uh, analyze your your model without. Uh, choosing the option of analyze after uh, in e tabs. So that's how you can perform your analysis and create your model in e tabs. So, in the next video, I will show you how we can extract the analysis results from the e tabs. So, for just to give you a a hint, uh, we will be using this pull option. So we will pull the, we will create a request and then we pull specific uh, uh, options or spe specific request from our ETEPS model. Uh, so I hope uh, this video helps you to create your model and in your professional work. And if you like this video, please uh, hit a like and see you in the next video. And I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.